and either location would seem to fit on the site. And again, we've discussed that uh, with uh, the town engineer. It would need to be okayed by the fire chief before we move forward with it. Um, that's basically um, the extent of the project. I should point out that uh, Joel, uh, as part of purchasing this parcel, there's an existing house here which he would uh, also purchase as part of the property would just be resold as a house lot. Uh, the, uh, the, the Dufrains that live next door over here, Joel is proposing to put some uh, landscaping in along their side of the property, uh, some evergreen type growth. Uh, we've showed an alignment of them through here. Uh, once we realign this, this road a little bit to match the, uh, what the town, the town is going to do, that exact location of the first couple of trees may need to shift a little bit. But um, the idea is to provide some added screening in there along that entrance road. Um, if it would be okay, I'd like to run quickly through uh, the town engineer's comments. Uh, they're fairly straightforward. Uh, we don't have... We will certainly address those. I've spoke with them. I think they're all uh, workable. And if it's okay, I'd like to run through each one briefly. Uh, the first one had to do with Pleasant Avenue work and that the town's doing and being able to widen and change the entrance here a little bit to match their plans. Uh, we spoke about that, and, it, and I think we can do that, and it's uh, agreeable. Uh, there was a question about the grading and the drainage coming down off of this property through a culvert here adjacent the wetland. The blue is the wetland we flagged uh, on the parcel. Mark Hampton, our soil scientist, has filled delineated that. We located it by controlled survey. Uh, we are not proposing to impact it or grade into it at all. We're going to stay away from it. That's uh, hence how the road uh, alignment was developed. But what we're proposing to do is to eliminate a couple of culverts here so that this drainage would work its way back into the property uh, where it tends to want to go now. And as a result, the, uh, any drainage coming off this site would be reduced. And the way the house lot grading would occur, it appears that the amount of runoff would be very small coming down through here and would be very close to what's coming through there now. And again, I worked with the town engineer in going over that, and uh, we think we can work through that one pretty, pretty simply. Um, the other one is, um, the other comments have to do with some, uh, just some detailed clarity on the plans. One is um, adjusting a contour line adjacent to the wetland um, to correct that. Uh, the first, you mentioned the first 100 feet of the road. The ordinance requires that you uh, pave for a distance of 50 feet, but Joel would like to pave it for 100 feet basically to get in past those first couple of houses. So we'd like to go further with the paving on that. Um, site distance uh, is adequate. You can see all the way down Ridge Road about 500 feet and almost 1,000 feet down Pleasant Avenue, so it works good in that location. Um, the, ve the vehicle turnaround uh, the town engineer recommended that we do put a turnaround in the site we discussed in this location or up here, which seems appropriate. Uh, we'll ask the fire chief which one he prefers. Uh, the 30-foot uh, wide access easement. When there's a 30-foot wide access easement that comes up through here, and a tiny portion of this uh, driveway right here actually fell outside the easement on this lot. The town engineer asked that we just include that in with the easement, and that makes sense so that uh, somebody doesn't have about a 10-foot strip that they can't get to their driveway. So uh, that's a good point, and we'll certainly take care of that. Um, we did the boundary survey, so we're certainly going to put our seal on it when we go to record this plan. That was uh, something that the uh, town engineer asked. <coughs> and I think... That pretty much goes through the review comments on it. Uh, if the board has any questions, I'll certainly try to answer them, or Joel or Kelly can help me with it. Madam Chair? Yes, Ms. Carlson. Number five of 18 foot, you didn't mention that. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, the, the applicant is proposing an 18 foot wide roadway in lieu of a 22 foot wide roadway. Uh, the basic reason is, is it's servicing two lots only. Uh, given the size of the lots and that um, 
the number of houses that are served, which right now are proposed at only the two, we were going to ask the board for a waiver to allow for 18 feet and 20, instead of 22 feet in width. And that is a waiver request that we do need to ask of the board. Thank you. Yes, sir. Comments or questions? I'm sorry, I bored everybody. <laughs> Mr. Wilcox. Uh, could you tell us the nature of the, uh, I noticed you have it shown in blue on your plan there, the wetland boundary, what type of wetland and what associated setbacks, if any, it has with it to what type of features? Uh, my understanding is that, um, well, I, I guess I'd have to, maybe I can defer a little bit to Maureen. I think it's, an, is it an RP2 wetland in through there? And there are no setbacks that I'm aware of that we need to hold from that. Um, if we had um, gotten into that wetland or needed to fill in that wetland, we would have also needed to ask for an RP2 wetlands permit, if I understand that correctly. Uh, but we were able to configure the road to stay away from the wetland. Did I answer that right? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Do I hear a motion? <coughs> Motion to the board to consider findings of fact. Number one, Fitzpatrick Associates is requesting a public access waiver for two lots, U27-57 and 22A, located at the corner of Ridge Road and Pleasant Road. Number two, the town assessor has confirmed that the lots complied with the minimum lot size at the times at the time the lots were created and have the status of legal non-conforming lots. Number three, the fire chief has noted that a turnaround for public safety vehicles has not been provided. Number four, the town engineer has identified technical issues which need to be clarified on the plans. Number five, the application substantially complies with section 19-4-2B public access waiver. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for a public access waiver for two lots located at the corner of Ridge Road and Pleasant Avenue be granted with the following conditions. <clears throat> Number one, the last sentence in paragraph three of the Declaration of Road Easement and Maintenance Agreement be deleted. Two, that a turnaround be designed and approved by the fire chief. Number three, that the plans be revised to address the issues identified in the town engineer's letter dated 5 13 Number four, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans have been revised in accordance with the above conditions and approved by the town planner and the town engineer. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Do I hear a second the motion? Second. Ms. Wilcox? Mr. Parkhurst and Mr. Wilcox, would you agree to an amend the first findings of fact to reflect the fact that the two lots are U-27-57 U and U-27-22 capital A would be just inserting that uh, U-27 before 22A to make sure we know what lots we're talking about. Thank you. Um, any further discussion of the motion? I have a question. Yes, Mr. Aslina. For the town planner. The, and I think I've raised this before and I can never remember what the answer is. The, the, the um, 18 foot wide roadway, what's the, is there a, a, a minimum that falls within the waiver provision? The, the current public access waiver standards and and I hope you have a great deal of affection for this as the last time you will use these yes, standards. Yes, uh, uh, um, But the miss current public access waiver standards say that the minimum width of a public access roadway is 22 feet. All of those standards, however, can be waived by the planning board, and there's no minimum that you can fall below. What the board typically has done is waive that standard um, to a point that both the planning board and the fire chief have been able to compromise on, which is the 14, 16, 18 foot range, depending on the width of the shoulders. So does that answer your question? So what you're telling me is 18 is not unusual. 18 is extremely common. This is what you've been doing for, for years. And in fact, it reflects what the new ordinance has right. as a standard. OK, that's what I was looking at. I thought you had told me that before. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Carlson. 
Yes, does the fire chief need to review that 18 foot? The fire chief gets a whole set set of all the plans. And so he hasn't seen that yet? He has he has seen all of the plans. He's and seen he had no comment people. about that. So. Right. If, I would okay. assume that if he had a problem, he would have um, Thank you. put it in his memo. Further questions or comments? There is a motion that has been seconded. If there is no further discussion, all in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. I'm Mark. How are you? Pretty good. I can motion we adjourn this meeting. Excellent. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> no opposed.